Hi there, welcome back. Uh, today now we've got the uh, subframe drop from the 6.3. It's time to start breaking it down and to see what it needs, you know, seals and whatnot. And hopefully it will come apart with, uh, without too much effort. So let's get on with that today. I'm going to start taking some of these uh, hoses off. These uh, units are marked with uh, letters here, A, B and E. Uh, and then there's A here, A, A. E. So, and also I've taken a lot of pictures of everything. So, as I've said, let's get this uh, uh, removed. I've been soaking these um, fittings for some time now, uh, just square little WD-40, uh, and they loosened up real nice. So I've loosened them all, ready for this video, but it didn't take much. Uh, they broke free really easily. So you can see, um, this doesn't look particularly cleanly done, so that might have been replaced at one point. Uh, and also they're quite high, uh, looks to me, and also here looks a little stressed. Uh, I don't know you can see that very well, but um, you know, if you can imagine the engine here, once these mounts get really deteriorated, the engine is just going to press down and crush these lines. So. Maybe when I put new lines on, I'm going to route them further down the profile of this uh, this subframe. I'll get these valves off and put them in a Ziploc bag, you know, because you don't want any dirt going in there. That's that one, just for the record. Yeah, it looks like these two brackets here is where the lines should be going in the factory, so maybe these were replaced at one time. these two together on the bottom here. Not sure exactly what way uh, travel of air and all that from the compressor unit. Um, I'll study all that, the, uh, the drawings in the manual, which way all this goes back round and circulates round. Just for a reference for the video, the B1 in the middle, they feed over, they snake their way round uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, the B1 snakes it way right around and the B1 snakes its way right around to the uh, Mazes uh, airbag. Uh, this is a 12mm open-ended wrench. Probably best use a pipe wrench, but these are so easy. Like I say, I soaked them for so long, they're coming off real easy, no drama. I. Uh, bent these tabs, these locking tabs out of the way on the mounting bolts here and I found just one a little loose, I'm assuming because it's stretched. Um, I spoke to Pierre about that. Well, I thought there was wear in the shaft but it isn't, it's the uh, one of the bolts had stretched so it was making it kind of sloppy. So that's that undone. I right, say so this is the B1. Just for reference these eight I think these are eights. Yeah, eight eight mil bolts here, holding these two brackets here that hold the three lines. I'm assuming three lines goes through that. All that obviously that rubber has deteriorated. I'm sure that's just a piece of rubber with three holes in it. So now removing A pipe. That's the letter A on that one. So. get this one over. I'm doing the uh, bags now. This pipe really is all over the place in here. I might have to take the engine mount off to get that. I might have to take 
the engine mount to get this pipe out of the way. Someone on the group actually did say that his mounts were so low they did end up crushing the air pipes. Yeah, there's no way of getting that out. Let me, uh, I'll take the engine mount off because I don't want to undo this yet. I want to take the engine mount off and hopefully we can slip it out. Not on very tight at all. As I say, the other one, one of these bolts was missing. Completely. Just as a tip, next time you're at the dentist, ask him if he's uh, throwing out any of these picks because they're not going to keep you very long, I'm sure you're that. So they're great for picking out crap like that. But, you know, like the Allen bolt thing, they get full of stuff in there. And if you can pick them out, get them real cleaned out. So you're ready for the socket, or the Allen socket, I should say. So. bit tighter. Cool, that's tight that one. I'm gonna soak that for a bit. There we go. Yeah. See what's going on with this guy. See I've not obviously done one of these before so it's new to me as well. Do me, I'll get my camera all greasy, I tell you. Who cares, I? Eh? Right, see? Bolt goes right there. That's the, uh, assuming that's just this guy, you know. You don't get this with the mounts, I presume. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Soon figure it out. Don't want to stress the little arm here. The, uh, the arm, I'll make sure that they're, uh, marked which way they came off, you know, which side. Okay, I've just took the little lever off, the swing arm, so this is detached, this guy, and then I can disassemble it a little easier. I'm going to relabel this because it got a bit messed up in the, uh, in the washing stage, so let me label that with the numbers and letters. Okay, I relabeled all these in reference. Get these guys undone here. Just reattaching these, just so I want to mark these to the pipes, you see. I know I've got loads of photos, but make it easier. I'm going to make all these, I think, though. Okay, once we're done uh, taking these valves off, I'll put them in bags, you know, for making sure no crud gets inside them. And uh, I'm going to bag up and box everything that comes off the subframe in one box, you see, so um, keep it all in order and mark the bags up. Uh, you remember in uh, the first video of taking the subframe out, talking about the grease points, and I thought there were seven each side, 14 total, there is. I, it was so covered in crap that I didn't see it. So we've got one here, top of the kingpin. This is the one I missed. It's at the back side of the kingpin. So one, two, three, okay. Four, five, six, seven. Both sides, that's 14. So uh, that's the one we were missing. So just a quick point there. Okay, just a little point of interest again. This is the top of the kingpin. I took this, uh, Oh, 17 mil nut off here, and there's a little cam here, uh, kind of an offset cam, and this is where the, uh, you can see where the, the camber adjustment is. I think that's the cam, that would be the camber adjustment, because it's kind of throwing it this way or that way, you see. So, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, all the seals and stuff you can see rubber seals are all gone now I've noticed various areas where seals are blown out but there doesn't appear to be any play anywhere which is kind of nice uh, nice and loose I'll put that out back on 
we can give it a little tap I believe oh, it's a There's a little nut here I'm going to have to take off. It's a retaining nut. It's like a 10 mil right there. On this side. I'll show you what it comes with. This little guy here. runs on, it's like a locking, a lock, you know, so it locks the cam in the correct position. Then, give that a few taps. I leave the nut on so you don't damage it, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be changing this out anyway, so it's not a biggie. get a punch and punch that through oh, there's that little guy got to put that on there just a reminder really Got a, you can see, I'll make sure my camera's still on. You can see there's a key along there, and then that little cam sleeve there has got a keyed piece in there as well. See? So, pretty simple little design, really. All dry as a bone. That hasn't been greased for a long time. Almost sticky to the touch, you know. So, we'll take this top arm off here. Nice to do all this on the bench. Can't imagine trying to do this kind of work on the car, you know? Sod that. I mean, for, for the effort to take it out, it's so worth it. That's the other bolt there. That's that guy off, look at that. Now, seal shot on that. Um, there don't seem to be any play at all, but I'm sure there's a way I'll probably lock that in a vise and just check for play. But what, what a really nice system, really, when you stop and think about it, you know? Bog simple, just keep it maintained and it'll go on for bloody ever. Right. I think that might be it for the night because I've got to get the barbecue on otherwise I'll get in trouble uh, oh just uh, here these are bushings or oh, there's a little uh, little plate here with notches on it and that is that keyed as well yes that's keyed obviously I've got all the um, manuals never to make sure everything goes back in the correct order but it's nice to familiarize yourself keep it all together i'm going to put all this in one bag so i know what i'm ordering you see i'll keep all that on that bolt get all that together you see and we don't go far wrong And then uh, I'll do the other end and then we'll drop the uh, the lower one out. And then there's these, uh, oh, you can see where my little bits of wood are here, wedging it to stop it completely collapsing. But there's two of these mushroom caps on each one. So one here and one at the front. So four total. Uh, this one's pretty badly cracked. I'll replace as another rubber item uh, that I'll replace. Uh, and also, uh, let me just show you before I knock it on the head for the evening so you can see it's got this kind of nice kind of burnt red kind of color but also i notice it on this lower arm here 
Um, what I'm wondering, because this is normally all black, you know, like a satin black, I'm wondering whether this was a replacement one. Someone put this on, maybe they had a break or something like that. Um, so this might have been later, because I don't think these arms were red. But correct me if I'm wrong, whether it was different on the 6.3, but I really don't think so. I think this is the only red bit. And then all this casing up top, you know. Uh, I want to try and keep it uh, as it should be. Um, you know that story I told you about when I was in Pasadena picking up a 108 and shortly after I bought it, um, I'm thinking it was this this lower arm. Well, I was picking it up and as I was leaving town, <laughs> take the owner, well the previous owner back to his uh, house so he could drop the renter car off or I could drop the renter car off, um, this snapped. One of these just sheared. Perfect example of why these are crucial points to lubricate because they can fail and you certainly don't want that happening at speed uh, so pretty sure it was the lower one um, yeah downtown Pasadena that happened um, he was as shocked as I was one more thing before I go um, I posted a picture on the Facebook group site about the steering box mount here onto the frame now this applies to all 108s and 109s but especially the 6.3 because of the extra weight and torque of the motor and someone made another point is that the tyres have uh, improved over the years so obviously they're gripping that much more so it transfers the stresses back to the frame more because there's not so much slipping down below. That makes sense to me anyway if that's right uh, but there's a little corrosion here on the frame but nothing too bad looks like someone's actual fat welded the damn bolt there now i don't think that's right uh i really don't think that's right at all i thought these were just sleeved holes here but anyway someone can correct me on that um because i'm going to take that box off and my idea is to uh, do what uh, apparently in some of the recalls is to weld a plate on here reinforcement plate to make sure that there's uh, no issues with that uh, clean all that metal up put a um, zinc coating underneath there because you don't want that as a moisture trap between the reinforcement plate and then i would uh, seam seal the plate as well and coat it and then longer bolts apparently but, yeah that's going to be an issue that because it looks like someone's tack welded that i might be wrong but anyway so that's one other thing for someone to check i don't think it's solely on these 108 109 chassis i think it applies to other models as well the 116 the 114s probably the 111s but um anyway all right what promise one other thing before i go see all this gunk and stuff here it's hidden but this is where the bolts go in now uh one guy on the group uh had such a such a badly corroded subframe uh, this bolt, uh, this nut, had fractured itself away from this housing. I mean, it was a real severe case. I'm assuming a lot. It was in a really uh, salty, bad road area, you know, where they sort the roads. And it, you could see totally how all that grease and gunk from lubricating them has kind of held a lot of crap here and then moisture build up. And another good reason to check that area it's just held on there, corroded through, and fractured it. Um, not something I would have thought of, actually, but it's, it makes sense, you know, that's a real... Uh, you know, check it out on this end. See, look at that. That's just all gunk in there. And that would take ages to dry out, you know. So, uh, I think you could probably observe that uh, from the top in the engine bay. Uh, but very difficult to access, you know, probably worth your while if you didn't want to take the subframe off, if you just take this uh, control arm off, um, you know, uh, to, to assess it properly, but anyway. Alright guys, I'm knocking on the head, I could keep going on this, I tell you, so much fun, so alright, I will stop now and carry on later, alright, cheers.